So far we've talked about uh, electromagnetic interactions and chemistry is really just the interaction of electrons with each other. And the nuclei, the center part, is not even getting involved. There is so much more energy involved in the nucleus than in the electromagnetic uh, spectra that surround it, the electrons that surround the nucleus. So let me tell you a little bit about the atom, just to remind you. Atomic structure. Very bare bones. First off, in the center of an atom is the nucleus. And the nucleus contains protons and electrons. And they're packed together in different strange ways. Here's uh, helium. I've got, I'll, say, I'll call that a proton. It's got a plus charge. And that right there, that's a neutron. It has no charge. It's neutral. No charge. Pro is positive. Plus. No charge. This nucleus is so much smaller than the atom. If, uh, let's see. If this was the nucleus of an atom, the nearest electron would be a kilometer away. So the nucleus is a very tight kernel as it relates to the entire atom. The electrons orbit about or are in, are in resonance uh, about the nucleus. And if you have a neutral atom, that means you've got the same number of protons, or excuse me, same number of electrons as you do protons. The name of the atom, of the element, is determined by the number of protons. If you've got just one proton, that's hydrogen. Doesn't matter how many neutrons are in there. The number of neutrons determine the isotope of the substance. Doesn't change the way it reacts so much other than it makes it heavier. But so you can have one, if you have one proton, that's hydrogen. If you've got a proton and a neutron, it's still hydrogen. It's called uh, deuterium, which is an isotope of hydrogen. Uh, it's a component of heavy water. If you have two neutrons and one proton, it's tritium. Tritium is like three times as heavy because a neutron weighs about the same as a proton. But it's got the same chemistry properties as hydrogen. And, uh, and just having one proton is the most common isotope of hydrogen. If I have two protons, that's always helium, no matter how many neutrons there are. The most common isotope of helium is helium-4. That's two protons plus two neutrons. But you get helium-3, two protons plus one neutron, different isotope. Three protons, lithium, four, beryllium, carbon's got six, oxygen's got eight. So the only difference, the only thing that makes up an element is the number of protons. And each element can have different isotopes of that element, which means different numbers of neutrons. Here's how we write these things down. It's of the form, it's of this form. And X is the name of the element. Like, uh, like you've got helium. That would be the X. Z is called the atomic number. And that's the number of protons, because that determines what kind of atom it is. And so, for helium, that would be a 2, because there are two protons in all of helium. And A is called the nucleon number. Protons and neutrons, they're in the nucleus, and so they're called nucleons. It's also known as the mass number. The most common isotope of helium has two protons and uh, two neutrons. So the nucleon number, there are four nucleons. So that's 2HE4. All right? So that's how it all works. Um, should I talk about a little bit about the chemistry of the periodic table? 
not too much. The chemistry is all determined by the electrons. And the energy in chemistry of the electrons is so much less than the energy in the nucleus, which is the difference between TNT and an atomic bond, bomb. I will tell you that the, uh, that the electrons, they form in shells, like layers of an onion. They'll first fill the inner shell, and then the next one, and then the next one. And generally, pretty much the outer shell, uh, the valence electrons, are the only ones that contribute to chemistry. So, for example, the first shell, electron shell, holds two electrons. So hydrogen's, I mean, it's got one electron in the neutral atom, so its shell isn't filled. Helium shell is filled, and so it doesn't react with anything. It's a noble gas. The next shell holds eight electrons. Uh, that's neon. And then argon, krypton, all these have filled shells, and so they don't react. Um, let's see. Chlorine is one, is one, uh, one electron short of filling its shell. Sodium has one extra electron. It's one electron past. It's starting a new shell. If it could share that somehow, the shells would be filled. Or if it could just get rid of that electron and donate it to chlorine, then their shells would be filled. So if you put them in solution, that's, well, that's an ACL, that's sodium chloride, that's salt. So that's, that's how chemistry works. A salt substitute is potassium chloride for this reason. Potassium is right down here. It's got the same, that same extra electron. Um, water. Here's oxygen. It's two electrons short. If it could share two electrons with something else, it would be having its shell filled. Well, hydrogen, it's missing. It's missing an electron. So it would like to share one. So if I take two hydrogens, if they can each share an electron with oxygen, then the hydrogen will be filled. And the oxygen, it'll have those two electrons shared. It'll fill its shell, and you've got water. Chemistry happens because of uh, filling electron shells. Uh, last one, ammonia is one of the most, besides water, one of the most common compounds in the universe. Ammonia needs one, two, three instead of two uh, hydrogens. And so NH3, that's, a, well, excuse me, nitrogen needs three to fill. So it grabs three hydrogens. So ammonia is NH3. Anyway, it's just all locks and keys. But for nuclear theory, keep in mind that the element is determined solely by the number of protons. The number of neutrons that that element may carry, that determines the type of isotope it is. The number of electrons it has is determined by the number of protons. So if it's neutral, if it's a neutral atom, it's got the same number of electrons as protons.